Hey, everybody. A lot of people have asked me recently, how do I tap with kids? Well, depending upon the age, it's going to make a big difference. So after the show reel, I'm going to talk to you about exactly how to do that in the most powerful and effective way for them. Ah, you can't pickle too much. <laughs> Welcome, depending upon the age of your children, is really going to depend upon and influence how you are tapping with your kid. Remember, anybody under the age of seven is in a different brainwave than adults. So they are actually, their imaginations are wide open. When we say they're little sponges, they actually are. Their brain is absorbing and translating information all the time. So of course, they also have much more access to emotion. When they're pre-verbal, you can do some touching on the points, but ask first. And I know this seems really interesting, but intuitively ask or say, is it okay if mommy touches your points? Is it okay if daddy touches the points to help you or to help the magical part of your mind calm down? And you can help touch the points. Here, why don't you touch them with me? I'm going to touch mine. You could touch yours, right? And so you can actually use the points. In fact, even with adults, you don't necessarily have to use any words. You can literally just tap or hold points. Same applies to children. Now, many kids also have a favorite toy, maybe a stuffed animal, maybe a doll of some sort. If they don't want to do tapping on themselves and they don't want you to do tapping on them, because remember, like forcing tapping on them is not going to be very helpful for their healing process, emotional healing process, because now you're trying to force them to heal because you're doing something to them, right? You're deciding how they should feel. You're taking control of their emotions. And that's not a healthy place to be. So we always ask respectfully, can I help you with this? Even if they're pre-verbal, you get a sense as a parent, just the same way you know sometimes when they need to be fed or held or what kind of cry they're having, you get a sense. So follow that intuition, follow that sense that you have about your own child. So sometimes let's say they had, I came home from school and they were sad. Well, what happened? I, mean, I had a bad day at school. Sometimes you can have them talk to their toys. Like, oh, did Teddy have a bad day at school? Yeah. Just Teddy want tapping? Yeah. And then they can actually tap some of the points just as if they were tapping on themselves, right? It doesn't matter that the bunny's nose is in a different spot. They can tap, oh, just tap on bunny's head. Does the bunny want her tap between her eyes? Yeah, you can tap between bunny's eyes. That making bunny feel better. The thing is kids have so much association and love with their stuffed animals and their toys that it will actually calm their system as well. Because until a certain age, right, we're also not super aware of many emotions or we're only aware of the big ones like I'm happy or I'm angry, right, or I'm sad. Those are kind of the only emotions that we have to express. We're not, we're not skilled in nuance, the nuances of many emotions. So know that you can play with this with your kids. Once they get older, like I remember my nephew when he was eight, we ran into some um baby black bears while we were out hiking. And of course he freaked out like, oh no, the mama bear is going to come and she's going to eat us. And oh, Auntie Dawn, you brought all the wrong food. And like everything was a tragedy, right? Because I said, well, we can either wait two hours and then come back along the same path or we can walk all the way around in our swimsuits on a hot summer day. But I kept having him tap, like just tap here. Tell me more about it. Tell me how frustrated you are. Just keep tapping here. And I just had him do the one point and then he'd stop tapping for a while, you know, because he didn't feel like it. And that's his choice. But after we were about a half a mile into the walk, he was much calmer. Um, he could call his mom and tell her like he still wanted the attention of like, oh, we ran into bears and it was scary. But he was much more calm. He was more focused on when are we going to get back? How are we going to eat? Rather than is the mom, mother bear going to come get us? So you can use this for test anxiety bullying um, when they're bullying or when they are being bullied by other kids. They can use it when they're feeling afraid. They're having challenges sleeping. You can even have them lay in bed and just hold your points. So when you're all curled up, just hold, just rub your points. Yeah, does that make you feel more sleepy? It helps calm their mind. You know, anything that you can do to start teaching your children to take care of themselves, to navigate their own emotions 
will help them in the long run. And same thing, they're very bonded with their animals. So they can touch their animals head too. If they don't have a stuffed animal, like, Kitty Valentine, are you sad? You can scratch your head and touch all the, all the points. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I also teach some hypnosis and we can use that on children as well because they're very in tune to how to shift their own mental state, their own physical discomforts and their dream states um, using hypnotic style techniques. So I hope this is helpful for you. Remember to subscribe and like, and please ask any questions that you need. I'd love to support you. Remember that you are loved, you're loving, and you're lovable. And Kitty Valentine and I say good night.